Glad you could join me in this Bible study. This is an alternative to what's going on in the world. We've got a Bible study that uh, we're going to take from Explore the Bible, which is going through Romans right now. Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11 is where we are looking today. And uh, I'm so glad that you could uh, join in this short Bible study video uh, to take a look at what we're going through so that you're not missing out a whole lot. But uh, we are going to look at Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Uh, as you know, in life, we got things going on with this coronavirus. It's got people hunkered down. People are worried about uh, their health. They're worried about their finances. Uh, relationships are different. Their job status, all kinds of things and tribulations uh, that we're currently going through. But we can have hope. We do have hope and we do have peace uh, through Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul is telling his audience here, the Romans, uh, when it comes to uh, looking at their faith, what their faith looks like, what yours and my faith looks like in our hope and through Jesus Christ. We see these uh, cause and effects relationships that go on in our world that we're seeing even right now. Uh, we see that, uh, um, we know that just this last week, as much rain as we got, uh, we worry about flooding. Uh, if you don't brush your teeth, you worry about cavities. Uh, you know that uh, even simple things as flipping on a light switch, you get light. Uh, but there, there's backstories to some of these things and, and how they happen. And even in trusting in God, this world needs to hear why they need to trust in God. We're going to look at how we can have peace in God. But you know, there is something even missing um, when it comes to this world knowing about it. I preached about this last Sunday when it comes to uh, Adam and Eve, and, and I said, uh, when it comes to the sacrifice of why Jesus had to go to the cross. why People don't know, why did he have to go to the cross? Uh, and as we look at, we, we had always, it needs to go back to Adam and Eve because we have uh, tracks, the Roman road, and, and here it is, we're looking at these scriptures of the Roman road of how you can be saved, but this world doesn't understand. They see it as foolishness, and Paul even talked about that, how Jews can understand their faith and, and uh, this relationship of uh, looking at the law and how they trust in it, uh, the Abraham covenant that and Israel covenant that God had, um, and with even within circumcision and God's word, His law, it, d it does give a description of His character and who He is, and that's that's important. This world needs to know that. But when we just start immediately, immediately with Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, people don't understand. And we need to be able to explain to them what that means. This, this, these verses that we're going to look at, we need to understand what the, what the cross means. And boy, it will stand out so much on its own from Paul, being able to give us a description of how we can have hope, how we can have peace and, and through Jesus Christ and what that means. <clears throat> but taking us back to Adam and Eve, the first man and woman who were without sin, God told them that they couldn't eat of a particular tree in the garden. They ate of it. All of a sudden, they had knowledge of good and evil. They understood what they did. There were consequences to it, and more than their consequences of their sin, such as um, man having to toil, toil the soil and not just having free reign in the garden, woman having childbirth, more than that, and even in their relationship with God, Something had to take place. Death took place. That relationship and separation from God, as we see in Isaiah, we are separated because of our sins. And uh, here it is in the scripture that we get to see um, Adam and Eve's relationship with God, how it was messed up. It was torn about. And as a result, more than they just being cast from the garden in this relationship that was hurt, they saw something that would abhor anyone who had never seen it before, and that was death. They saw the first death take place, and it was caused by God because of their sin. And it, here it is. They knew death could come, and they were scared to death of the results or the consequences of that death that was to come. But God showed them mercy upon their lives, spared their lives, and in place of their lives, a symbol of their own death, was an animal had to be sacrificed. And, be, and if you remember, they uh, had, had put leaves over their, uh, over their nakedness, covering their shame and their guilt. And then God said, 
Here I'm going to give you something else for you to remember by, and that is I'm going to clothe you. I'm going to give you grace and mercy. The death took place, would have poured them, seeing this first uh, murder, this first killing, this first death that would have taken place. And it was this, this skin of an animal placed over them. We call it clothing, and now we put different types of clothing on, but you can very, be mindful of covering your nakedness, your shame, and your guilt. God placed that there. He provided it, and in place of their death. And so that should strike us to the heart that would God would do this, do this. And now in the second phase, what takes place? They, that was the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. Now in the second one, it says if God takes us from room one or chapter one to chapter two and taking us into that second chapter by the hand, we're going in as a child. He says another death is going to take place. That one, that substitute of an animal wasn't human. And you're going, is it me? And we'd be scared to death to go into a room such as, and he goes, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to provide it. And I'm going to provide you my son. This is how much I love you. This is how much I want to redeem this relationship, this broken relationship, because you stood condemned. I want that relationship back. And I'm going to go to the cross for your life to pay the penalty of your sin, of the entire world's sin. That should be um, a wow moment for you and for others. That's what this world needs to hear, what God did on our behalf. And as we look at this passage of scripture, look with me in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, how we can have such peace in the trying times. Christians got peace. You have everything that you need. Look with me. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained introduction by faith into his, this grace in which we stand. And we exalt or rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also rejoice or exalt in our tribulations. How can we do that? Exalt in our tribulations. Uh, by knowing that tribulation, going through what you're going through, brings about perseverance. And perseverance, proven character. And proven character, hope. Hope. And hope does not disappoint. Because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And for while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone might dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified, being made right with God, um, <clears throat> by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. I want you to understand uh, through all of this that um, these, this is separated out into three different sections that we can kind of look at and clump together. Verses 1 through 5, then 6 through 8, and then 9 through 11. I want you to look at this entire chapter as well because it really looks at, and Paul even talks about later on, 12 and beyond, verses 12 and beyond, about Adam and how he's the first man and what, how Christ now, uh, he is the true Adam. One brought sin into the world, another one paid the penalty, and Jesus paid that penalty. Look at with me uh, verses 1 through 5. This is where we see, uh, we see peace. Therefore, having been justified by faith, justified being not guilty, um, justified being uh, that uh, not guilty, meaning you, you are now uh, right with God. And so through Jesus Christ, it says you've been justified. You are found not guilty, and we have peace as a result. You can have peace because of that through God, our Lord Jesus Christ. That peace also uh, kind of counters when Paul uh, spoke of earlier in chapter 3, verse 17. He said, And the path of peace that they have, uh, the path 
of peace they have not known. Before Jesus Christ, you did not know peace. And he was quoting Isaiah chapter 59, verse 8, um, that we now have a peace and we can know that peace because of what Christ going to the cross for us. And it says, through whom, verse 2 says, for whom we also have obtained uh, our introduction by faith. This is the faith we placed in Jesus Christ into this grace that God has given us in which we stand. And we, what do we do as a result? We rejoice. We exult in the hope of the glory of God. You have that peace. He goes on to say, and, only, and not only this, but we also rejoice in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, perseverance proving character, and proving character hope. Uh, we're going through uh, some difficult times. Some people are li they're living in fear. It's a tribulation to be hunkered down at home. They're worried about their jobs. You're worried about so many different things uh, currently. And uh, he's going, through you going through this, if you're relying and trusting in Christ, what results in, throughout these in tribulations that you can rejoice in, knowing that you will persevere, that you will make it through these things. You will persevere. And second, after you persevere through it, a proven character. We want to have uh, the same likeness and character of Christ, the same character of God. God displayed, as we saw earlier, through the law uh, in prior, prior chapters where Paul is talking about the law for in, in the Old Testament. Um, here it is. That's where we see a display of God's character, of what he looks like, that he's merciful. He, he waits upon us. He wants to save us, and he wants us to live with him. Um, that this is a relationship. We see that he is a heavenly father. He's one that we can go to. And because of this um, hope that we have, the tribulations that we go through, the perseverance that we have, uh, and th that, we, that we also experience, that it'll prove our character to trust in the Lord, that we can have a character like his, and I think it will align with his. And a result of that is that we can put our faith and our trust and hope in him. And so this proven character turns into hope, and it's an assurance that we have that we'll get to spend eternity with God in heaven uh, because of Jesus Christ. And there's a closure. There's a happy ending as a result. Uh, so we see this and this hope it says, does not disappoint in verse 5, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We have peace through the Holy Spirit. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And if you placed your trust in Christ, you have everything that you need. You have the power of God living in you to persevere, to go through trials, to hope in. And, and he is right here with us. He's not a distant God, but he's given us a counselor. He's given one who has compassion on us, who speaks with us and to us and, and takes us through these tribulation times and uh, that we have hope and that we actually can rest and we can have peace. And he says he's poured out the love of God through the Holy Spirit. You have that poured out onto you. That is fantastic that you have peace and that you also, we have God's love. It says that in verse 6 through 8, he's saying, hey, this love has been poured out to you through the Holy Spirit. Look at this, verse 6 through 8, and remember what Christ has done. It says, for while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Have you felt helpless during some of these things? I, I, I tell you, it's, it's very unique for places of job. Um, some of you are still having to work in, in environments, not knowing if you're going to get it. You worry about loved ones. Um, it's in, and there's just not a whole lot you can do. Some of you, uh, we, we laugh at the, the toilet paper and uh, food running short, but it's no laughing matter um, when people are concerned and worried about these things. And there's not a whole lot you can do about it. You feel helpless. And yet here... Paul is telling the, these, he's telling the, these Christians, he's telling us, while we were still helpless, lost in our sin, Christ died for us, the ungodly, when we deserved death and eternal separation from the holy God. And so he says, for one will hardly die for a righteous man. And, and, and understand what God really did here. It says, 
One would hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare to even die, surely die. But, but God demonstrates his own love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, ungodly, perverse, making us ourselves to be a God, turning to our own ways, it says that Jesus died for us. He went to the cross willingly. He went to uh, Jerusalem just for this reason, and that was to be arrested and handed over and to go to the cross. And we know victory has happened because of the resurrection. But right here in this study, in this lesson, we're hearing from Paul that we have victory in Christ and we have peace because of what Christ has done for us, that we have um, life, eternal life in him. And you can have that kind of peace. And we also have so much love lavished on us from our Lord and Savior, through, or from our God, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, look at uh, verses 9 through 11. We also have this uh, ultimately is reconciliation. We have a relationship with God. 9 through 11 says, Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him, through Jesus. This wrath of God points back to uh, the previous chapter, chapter 4, verses 15, when he's talking about, Paul's talking about the law, the law uh, to the Jews, and he says, the law that you know and that you understand about God, it brings wrath. It brings judgment upon you. You realize you are a sinner because of God's law and him displaying his character in the Old Testament. And so we have wrath. But it says in verse 9 here, it says Paul is telling us listeners and readers and Christians, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For if while we were yet enemies, our own gods are, are trusting our own selves, we, we now have been reconciled in our relationship to God through the death of Jesus, his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And that's the promise that we have, that we are reconciled and that relationship was, that was broken has been restored. I tell you, let me challenge you, the, those who are out there, let others see the hope that you have. Let others see that, that Christ is in you and that you once were lost, you once were separated from God and you have a hope in him, that you have a peace, that you're trusting in God through these tribulations, through these times that we have, uh, whatever persecutions that might come. Um, you know, it's amazing that Brother, our, our, our Governor Stitt uh, shared and had an hour service of prayer and worship uh, on the television um, Wednesday night that I think was, abs or Thursday night, that was absolutely fantastic and proclaimed Jesus Christ across our entire, entire state boldly. Would you do that with other Christian friends, with neighbors, um, those of you are coming in contact with, and uh, those who you work with, where your trust is, that you have peace, that you have God's love, and that you, your re the broken relationship has been reconciled because Jesus paid your penalty upon the cross. Will you tell that to others? But let me even say this to you, Christians. You have peace. You have peace, what God, has done. Be it what God has done, and be assured that Christ is in control. God is on his throne, and he will get glory through all of this. Have peace, and, and let's tell others God's love and, and the relationship that we need to have and be, and, and be reconciled with God. And it says all throughout these scriptures, rejoice, exalt in all of these things. Even what we're going through now, you can give praise to our Heavenly Father. Thank you, friends. Let's go to Lord in prayer. And I'm going to pray for you and our community, our church, who desperately needs that as well. And uh, because God is to be praised, he's taking care of us. And uh, we just want to uh, glorify our Lord. Lord God, we want to exalt and lift up your name. We want to give praise and exalt in a way that uh, uh, in, in things that we go through uh, and, and uh, rejoice in those things of what you've given us even now that we can trust you, that people can uh, um, spend time with you, that they can sing, give thanks to you, they can sing songs of praise to you. 
Lord God, I pray for our leaders, our church leaders. I pray for our church right now. Um, Lord, I, I pray for our health care workers, our community, uh, our state, and our nation in this world. Lord God, that people will have peace through Jesus Christ. That, uh, Lord, that uh, they will put their faith and their hope and their trust in you. That they can realize the love that you have for them and that you want to reconcile a broken relationship unto yourself. And you've done that through your son. Uh, Lord, I, I do lift up our community. I do lift up uh, those who are vulnerable and uh, to the coronavirus, those who are suffering, those in their jobs, those who are um, going without, those who um, are missing some of the, even the, the, the pleasures of life that uh, uh, can be beneficial, um, even the communication that we can have with other people. But God, that you can receive all the glory through this. God, I thank you um, for this time that we can lift you up. May the name of Jesus be exalted and worshiped and praised. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, friends, for watching this, and I hope to see you again next week, or you'll get to see me as we do another Bible study lesson. Do pray uh, for our community and our world and um, our, our elderly and everyone around us. But uh, uh, you have a great week and have assurance and peace. Thanks.